Hey, Pat Draws, good to see you in there. Josh, good to see you as well. Thanks for joining us. We're doing a different thing tonight, and I think it's going to be fun. Nice, watching your daughter play Call of Duty and chilling with Blue Box. That sounds like a great night. Now, we have somebody, we have a, a Call of Duty legend on with us tonight. So we're joined by a few people that are uh, with us in our Discord. So we're actually piping our Discord audio directly into our Twitch stream tonight. Uh, anyone is welcome to join if you go into the Discord and you go down to our voice chat channels, you will see the mini painting and art channel. Currently we have five folks in that channel and uh, as many as you want to pop in may. Now just, uh, hello Azure Yuki Poo, thank you so much for joining us. Um, any of you that wish to can uh, jump in the voice chat, but realize your, your voice will be heard on Twitch. Otherwise, you can just interact with us uh, in the chat uh, through typing if you prefer. And I'm gonna go ahead and click us over. Let me see here, I've got, I've got a bunch of these different views. Let me pick the right one. It's gonna be this guy right here, I believe. Going, hello Cameron, live on video in three, two, and one. And I got it right, okay. Hello everyone, and we got, a, we got a few different things that are going on here tonight as you're watching us. Uh, first of all, uh, in the upper right hand corner of your screen or your uh, phone, you see uh, my daughter and my wife, and they are going to be painting along tonight with Manda. In the bottom left hand, right hand corner of your screen, uh, that is the screen of Manda, the mystical unicorn. Uh, and she's going to be the uh, lead painter tonight. She's going to walk us through what she's doing. She's going to do much of the uh, kind of walking and talking through it tonight. Uh, and then the upper left-hand corner, you're going to see different things throughout the night, not just ads. Uh, you may see um, screen images from my screens here. You may see close-ups of the minis that are being painted here in the room with me. And you may actually see close-ups of minis being painted by other people in the community. Um, I'm gonna be piping some folks in that want to. If you've got a mini and you want me to show it as you're painting it, you can send a link to me in Discord. I'll tell you how to do it. And I can pull your screen up and your mini up uh, right here live on the stream. So we're gonna do a few of those fun things tonight. Um, but as we uh, get started, let me let Manda kind of, let me straighten this camera out. Manda, why don't you go ahead and kick us off with an introduction and tell us what you're working on there. I didn't, they didn't think this far ahead. I was just gonna paint. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, put me on the spot there. Dude, real, do it. I'll, I'll take uh, care of most of it, but it's a good place to start. Yeah, um, I I don't even remember the company's name, but I'm painting Rizia. <laughs> Very nice. I'm painting Rizia. Uh, Yet Hero Minis, I believe is what it is. That's a really nice mini holder you have there as well. Oh yes, yes, look at that. I have two of them actually. So this, this is actually my my custom one. When he first launched them, um, he did an artist series and I was one of the featured artists, so. That's very this, cool. This so the, these are from yeah. uh, Darren of Ferox Fabrication, one of our sponsors. And uh, we've sent a few of those out. I have a couple more I'll be sending out as well. But thank you for everybody in the chat um, that's already joined us. And uh, on voice tonight, already in, we have uh, Toriano, Biggie Paw. We have Fraley17, that's Patrick. Uh, we have Kurt, Cuvenet, and uh, Amanda and I all in the voice chat. So. Uh, Let's uh, let's go to uh, Toriano. Toriano, tell us what kind of what you're working on tonight, because I think you're painting as well. Yeah, I've got uh, more of a night. Um, I don't know if you guys can actually see it. I think it might be too blurred from the light. I don't know if I can actually block some of the light, but yeah. So it's got the shield and sword on it. Um, going with more of a black and red for the outfit. Okay, very nice. So whenever you want to show that, just let me know. I do have your uh, your camera here available to share whenever you would like me to. Um, and then we also have with us Fraley uh, and Patrick, of course, my good friend. And also uh, we talked him about him a little bit this week. He's doing a lot of the Dark Sun slash Sea of Dust mini prints and painting for us. Um, Patrick, welcome. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. Thank you very much. And thanks for being with us. Uh, and then we have Kurt, um, super active newer member 
of our community. Uh, Kurt is actually going to be running a one shot at Blue Box Con, and uh, he's going to be with us all that weekend. Uh, some of the newer folks we're going to have there are friends of his that play. Uh, with him on Wednesdays at the gaming store uh, that we're going to be at on Sunday. So, uh, Kurt, welcome. And if you uh, if you don't mind, Kurt, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit? Uh, folks haven't really met you here. Uh, they've seen you in chat, but kind of tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh... Well, man, the introductions, that's a, that's a weird thing. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Kurt. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I've been TTRPGing for years. Uh, I am an avid streamer on many channels and doing many things, and I absolutely love D&D. Um, uh, very funny story about how I met John that everybody has probably heard at this point. Um, but past that... Um, Let's see, uh, I've worked in the TTRPG industry for going on a decade now, um, and that's really about it. I love running running games. It's an awesome and amazing thing. Happy to be here. Outstanding. And uh, tell us a little bit about this this um, Pirate Borg one-shot you're running at the con. Ah, Pirate Borg. Okay, so Pirate Borg, for those of you who don't know, uh, Pirate Borg is powered by Mork Borg. Um, basically what it is is it is a very gritty hardcore system reminiscent of very old school D, &D where like um one bad die roll can spell the end for you almost um it is it has a very solid dark souls kind of vibe if you're familiar with that franchise or bloodborne um the pirate borg version of it though is uh, basically, it is a slightly darker version of Pirates of the Caribbean. So there's magic and mysticism and things like that on the Seven Seas, and a little touch of uh, old Call of Cthulhu during the late during the late 1700s. It's a uh, it's a lot of fun, in my opinion. Um, really great for con events and one shots and just having a, a very good time. I like it. No, it does. It does sound like a lot of fun. Um, and I'm going to just pepper you with a couple more here while Amanda's painting. And Amanda, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to, uh, if you don't mind tonight. Now, I know if you if you don't want to talk while you're painting because it's distracting, you can just say, John, shut up. Uh, but if you're open to it in a moment, I'm going to ask you to tell us a little bit about what you're doing with your paints or your layers and, and kind of the, 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 the work of the, or the teaching piece that you could maybe do a little bit tonight of. Um, but Kurt, back to you. So um, tell us what, like, what can someone expect from you as a DM? Every DM has a different style. Um, um, how would you describe your style? Uh, so my DM style can very much be summed up with the following phrase. And if you know it, you know it. Yes, and. <laughs> that is my DM style. Right. Uh, yes, and. What is next? What else are you going to be trying to do? If there is some harebrained scheme that you can try and come up with to do at the table, we will find a way to make it work so long as it makes sense. And believe me, what I say, if it has to make sense, I have a long stretch on that particular phrase. Oh, <laughs> really? Okay, nice. Um, yeah. I like that. That sounds like a lot of fun. And uh, if you have not yet signed up, you know, we got a lot of folks on here. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, that's so true. Jenny said she loves hair brain schemes. Uh, this is the essence of her role play style. So there really could be a match between your game and her role play style, Kurt. Um, if you have not yet signed up uh, for any of the games, please go ahead and sign up if you're coming to the con. Um, I mentioned this in Discord, and I'll mention it again uh, later tonight, but we did close off uh, the convention signups, uh, so all the tickets um, are the badges, as they're called, are sold out. I don't want anyone to get confused with, yeah, and by the way, that kind of chaos will be heard throughout the night tonight. Um, uh, just pay it no mind. Uh, the badges are the attendance. The tickets are the games. And I know that's what you think of like, well, I, can I get a ticket? Yeah, you can get a ticket. You can get a ticket to any of the games still. Those are free. Um, the badges are for the actual con attendance and that's what has been closed off now um, because you know we're, we're full. Um, all right. Uh, I'm gonna come back then to Patrick. And uh, Patrick, you're gonna be uh, DMing on Sunday. Uh, tell us a little bit about your one shot. Oh, uh, we are going to be delving into the world of Kryn. We are going back old school to Dragonlance. And so, not not with particularly the new uh, book that came out, but I've always 
liked Dragonlance. I think what drew me to Dragonlance more than anything was Elmore and all the other artists that mm -hmm. uh, did the calendars and the books and the and the old modules and stuff like that. So we're going to be going to uh, Kren to find out what's going on with. Uh, well, to give a little bit of an explanation, the adventurers are going to be looking for the missing clerics. Okay. Because clerics, divine magic has been taken out of the world. And there are rumors that there's divine magic being seen. So they're on the lookout for it. Love it. Love it. That sounds like fun. Um, all right. So I'm going to go over our announcements here as well. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be on for another sort of hour and 45 minutes tonight. And it's just going to be a real low key uh, stream not the typical sort of um, blue box stream, but I thought it'd be fun to just hang out, paint tonight. I'm gonna be working on uh, content and prep for the charity stream. So I may share some of that with you as I go. Um, and of course, that is the big announcement. You see it there in the upper left-hand corner. Our Greyhawk charity mega stream launches this Friday, uh, the 17th, and you have a host of great streamers. Uh, we have raised $30,000 uh, in the last uh, two years alone, and we expect we're gonna have a really, really good number that we'll raise again this year for St. Jude. This goes to the Children's Research Hospital. Uh, for those of you that have not participated with us before, this is all run through a tool called Tiltify. So none of the money comes through uh, me or any of the other streamers. Uh, it doesn't go through Jay. It, there'll be a Tiltify link uh, set up and every stream you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to click that link, give to it. It'll record. So we'll show a running total in all the streams so you can see how much we have raised during the charity stream, but that money pipes straight through to the charity. Hello TCAT, welcome. Uh, so that's the uh, that's the mega stream, and then of course our first stream here at Blue Box for that mega stream is on Friday. Um, you can see it there in the upper left hand corner of your screen. That's going to be the 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central, uh, and it's titled Crypt of Enlightenment. Uh, is the stream that I'll be running, and the cast? Yes, yes, absolutely, Kai Hawkeye. Um, hey, C Carson, good to have you. Hey, Chris, I have somewhat against thee. I had a really good idea for you and I to work on from a development standpoint, and you've been absolutely just biffing it. Um, so where are you at, man? I'll, I'll let that just kind of hang there for a second, Chris. Yeah, I'm calling you out on stream. Um, anyway, while he's contemplating that. Uh, so we're going to be, that night, I have an amazing crew. Uh, I have, of course, our own Vivi uh, joining with us. Uh, and she's going to be playing a halfling sorcerer, if I remember correctly. She took Celeste, uh, the halfling sorcerer. Uh, we have Ashlyn, the dollar store DM. She's going to be playing Nara, the elven ranger. Um, we have Matt of Feralborn Trading. Matt is going to be playing Gorin, the dwarven cleric. Uh, and then we have John Demongund. He's going to be playing Anaxis, the elven wizard. And, of course, the man of the hour, uh, legendary New York Times bestselling TSR lead, THE Richard Baker. Uh, he'll be playing uh, Aiden, <clears throat> the human paladin. And that's going to be a really fun crew. Great role players, knowledgeable people, one and all. And uh, I have, a, I think, a really fun, a different style of adventure. I may talk about some of that tonight. I won't give away too much, but... Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a, a great time. So, uh, Manda, let me come back to you. Um, I asked you a moment ago, uh, you, can you just share with us a little bit about what you're doing right now with your technique and your paints? So right now, I'm being stupid and mixing my own colors because <laughs> it's not like I don't have an array of colors, but I decided to make it hurt on myself. But uh, I am wanted to go for more of like a dried skin or hide for the cloth. So that's why we're doing a more peachy color. Um, and all I used to mix this, if anybody's interested, was uh, ivory and brown. That's it. Just ivory and brown. Amanda, it does look like the focus went off on your camera just a little bit. It's close, but not as crispy as it was earlier. That's closer. A little more that direction. Almost. Ah, there it is. Boom. Yes, much, much better. Thank you. Everybody else in chat, does that look better to you as well? 
Hello, Taryn. Uh, looks like she's locking out while she shakes the paint bottles. Oh, rocking out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jen, I said it looked like you were rocking out while you shook the paint bottles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't that what we're supposed to do? <laughs> exactly. Uh, very cool. All right. Yeah. Well, the problem with mixing your own paints, I'm assuming, right, is that, yes, that is Manda. Hey, Thomas. So we got a few things going on here. Uh, Manda, so you got, um, you, Thomas, you got Manda painting in the bottom right hand corner. She's the reluctant star of tonight's show um, as we're painting along with her. Uh, and then we have my wife and daughter painting in the upper right hand corner. You've got me monitoring chat and also working on my charity stream stuff tonight, which I may share. Upper left hand corner, there's gonna be a multimedia thing going on there. We've got announcements. I may do remote screen shares of other painters like Toriano. Toriano, are you ready for me to show something? Sure, you can. All right. Okay, well, hang on. So let, so let me show that real quick. So let's go to Toriano first. So if you look at the upper left-hand corner of your screen, boom, the power of the web and all the cool tech we have here. Uh, that's Toriano. Uh, remind me what state you're in, Toriano? Wisconsin. Wisconsin. He's not on our Zoom. Uh, he's using OBS Ninja and coming in directly. Uh, so anybody else, if you've got something you want to show, you go to Video Ninja on the web, share your screen or your camera, and you can send me a URL and I can have it up on our stream in seconds. Um, so tell us what you're painting there, uh, what you're doing with him and uh, kind of what you're, what you're trying to get out of him. So it, this is uh, night. Um, I'm going with a black and red theme for the armor. Uh, it's more to go with the the theme of uh, one of my original characters, um, which was a it was an elf that ended up becoming more or less bloodlusting. So that's why I went with the black and red uh, armor for it. Very nice. So. Very nice. All right. So and uh, tell us a little bit like what paint you use. Do you have a brand that you prefer, uh, Toriano? No, I'm kind of new to this a little bit. I talked to Mike Disney. I talked to Amanda a little bit about the different paints they use. So my wife is more the painter of the house than I am, for sure. I see. Okay. And then uh, what, what kind of what kind of a uh, um, painting holder are you using there? What's that that painting holder you've got? This here? No, no, no. The the one your mini's on. Oh, this is from Mike Disney. This is one that Mike Disney uses. Yeah. Let me see that. Can you hold it sideways so we can see it? Yes, uh-huh, exactly. I've seen him use that on his stream. That's super cool. Yeah. Um, all right, very good. Like, well, we'll check in with you a little bit later, Toriano. I'm going to hide your video again. Um, so uh, in addition to uh, the the full slate of Greyhawk uh, streamers, uh, you've got the highlighted stream on Friday night, which is ours. You've got the highlighted stream on Saturday, which is Jay's incredible cast. Uh, you know, you've seen the flyer. I've gone over it several times. He's got an amazing crew that Saturday night running a really um, different uh, game called Puppets and Then Some. Uh, if you watched our Lore Masters Arcanum on Wednesday, you got to see some of the paints that the incredible Bill the Master Crafter did. Um, and so uh, you'll be able to watch that on Saturday. And then um, we'll kick off early Sunday morning. Uh, full slate of games and then blue box will be back on uh, for the charity stream with our tears of air game and yes that will be the premiere of the under street rats all grown up uh, so you're gonna see click duke uh, mila and dahlia as uh, it's an advance of 17 years so they're gonna be between like 18 19 years old and it is going to be incredible they will be in full cosplay as well uh, so when you tune in on that Sunday you'll not be only be supporting the charity stream and the great cause a great story but you're gonna see uh, some cool cosplay and some amazing uh, adult under Street Rats and that fantastic story of Tears of Aired it's already become a super popular stream on Blue Box um, rumble, yes. rumble, rumble, rumble. <laughs> what? No, what? No, no, no. what? No, I don't. She doesn't know what is on this element. Okay, all right. So hang on. Let's do two things. Can you put your piece back here? So something else we'll do tonight is we'll show occasionally uh, the work that's being done here. So this guy uh, is the one that Jenny's working on. And I believe, Patrick, this is one of yours as well, isn't it? Uh, what is it? Is that the elemental? This is like a, it's like a sewer. I, 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 I don't know what this is. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, so this guy here, uh, he's got like branches and I don't even know what this thing is. Uh, the, the combination of like an Adiug and a root monster or something. I don't know what that is. Um, what's that? Oh, no, I just got clawed by a cat. Don't, don't oh, worry okay. About hey, thank you so much, Josh. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, it could be a shambling mound. It's got a lot of like roots on it, though. I think Shambling Mound's the best guess, T-Cat. Let's go with that. Um, so then we had a question here, and this one is uh, yours, I'm pretty sure, Patrick. And the question is, should th this is from my daughter. Should this guy have a face? And I'm thinking the answer is yes. Is that not the question? question. Oh, what's the question? Um, what are these? <laughs> oh, the things on his chest? I mean, I would just call them flames. But Pat, Patrick, do you have any other, like the things on his chest right right here? I'm gonna tap them with my thumb. This is your print. My youngest is wondering what to do with that. Uh, Yeah, I, I would say that's some sort of flame coming out of there. Yeah, yeah, just flames. You can't, with a, with a with an elemental, you can't go bad with the flames. And then how do, she, how do we add texture to rocks? Oh, okay. Uh, this is a question for anybody here. Uh, we have these 3D printed rocks. These are some that I think you gave these to me the very first year of Blue Box Con, Patrick. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, these are FDM printed uh, rocks. And the question has come how do we add texture to these? Well, I would, I would, I would paint them. Uh, whatever base paint coat, you're gonna paint them like a gray. Yes. And then uh, what I usually do for rocks is I will mix up a different color, a lighter gray, a green, and a yellow, little bits of each till you get the way you want it. And then kind of dry brush it on it to give, to, to show uh, definition and stuff. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so Pat Draws had, also, he said, uh, use sponges. <laughs> I could see yeah. that. I could see sponging to create that sort of textured effect. All right, very cool. Thank you. There's, there's another way too. All right, what's the other and way? And that, that is cover it in glue and dip it in sand. Nice, nice. This is playground sand. Now does that, okay, so I've had a problem with, um, so for example, I've got a sand uh, base view here that I used on my table. Uh, we've got one that had glitter on it, and even uh, Bill, the master crafter, the piece that he set me for um, the the cornfield, the patch for the overgourd, mm -hmm. all of those things they they leak off, they fall off they eventually. Shed. Yeah, yeah, they, they shed, shed, and then I wind up with sand. Seal them. What's that? Seal them. So, so like seal spray them with spray paint. Um, glue and water. So so you glue them on, and then you seal mm -hmm. them over the top. And is there a sealant you can use that doesn't make it glossy, that keeps it matte? Yeah, um, right here. That this and water. But if you got like a large piece, like let's say- put it in a, So you're gonna, you're gonna dilute this down and it's going to be, you're gonna put it through a spray bottle. And oh, a spray, spray bottle. <laughs> oh, yep. Elmer's glue through a spray bottle. Never thought of that. Um, the other option is something like this, but don't get the gloss version, obviously, get the matte. Modge Podge, um, okay. Yep. Uh, there are options that are rattle can stealers. Um, <laughs> hold on, I got it. So there's a rattle can sealer. This is what I use on my miniatures, I seal them, but it'll hold in terrain and stuff like that. Nice. So. Very yeah, cool. No, that's, that's what I do. Also, um, when you're doing it, when you first first do it, don't just dip it. So don't take it like here. Don't just take the base and, and dip, and then there you go. What you want to do is you want to take it and leave it in there till the glue is dry. Oh. And then you're going to come in, you're going to tap it off, then take a brush, just a makeup brush like this that's really fluffy. And then you're going to brush off any excess off that glue. And that's going to get rid of your shedding bit right there and then seal it. And you shouldn't have any fallout. That makes so much sense. Very cool. Um, by the way, we've been joined in our 
voice chat by Keith. Uh, you know him as Roger or Rogar. Uh, Keith is in the voice chat. Keith, do you want to say hi or do you want to stay on mute, brother? You can stay muted if you prefer. You don't have to be on the voice chat, but uh, he's in there with us. And anyone else that wants to, uh, you just go into our Discord. And in fact, well, here, I'll, let me drag this up to the top and I'll show you. So here's our Discord. And if you scroll down on the left side here, uh, you'll see there's a mini painting voice chat. It's got five or six folks in here. Anyone that pops into this chat, you will be heard on the stream. Uh, and you can also pick us up live on audio. Uh, Tracy said, if you don't mind a light <clears throat> or tan sand color, Citadel makes a textured color called Tellarn Sand. It's very good for giving rocks some texture. Okay, that's a good tip. There's also, just for, I don't have any, well, I might have some of the Citadel stuff around me, but the easiest one. Uh, rumor has it those are going away. Is um, stuff like this, just texture paste. Um, so when you open them up, I am not going to spill that shade. I'm going to move it. Um, and we'll open it up. That's what it looks like. Oh, yeah, okay. And it's just a paste, and it'll dry. Um, and it'll, you can push a sponge in, into it or whatever to get different textures and stuff. Uh, and then, if you want to get really advanced, once you've done that and you've dry brushed it and stuff, you can introduce stuff like this, which is weathering powders. Weathering powders. Oh. Yeah. Never, never so heard of that. These are grab a brush it's just a powder so dip it in see just a okay powder and you dab that onto something and well, let me see if i can get a base Should have awesome something. hello hard knock life 122 welcome uh we're doing an unusual stream here at Blue Box. Typically, uh, we're playing games or we have our Lore Masters Arcanum on Wednesday nights, but we're doing a special stream tonight, just kind of hanging out, <coughs> talking and doing painting, uh, chatting with others that are painting, and uh, just kind of having a low key night before the Super Bowl. Uh, so, Amanda is showing us here how to add texture to a base using something called weathering effects. So, this is, an, this is just a regular base. I don't have anything to do it. It comes like this. But, so you'd want to have like dust around here. So we're just going to dip our brush into our powder. We're going to tap off some extra and we're literally just going to dab it into space. Nice. Huh, look at that. We're just going to do that. Now, obviously, if you were to move that around, it's going to just go everywhere. You can right. use alcohol, um, like just the night proof, whatever you can find. Um, but you can also buy fixers. They stink to high heaven. So do not use any good brushes with it, but you're going to dip a brush in. Again, you, if you're doing the alcohol way, you can do this. And you just let it rough and spread. Okay. And this is what's going to keep the powders on your miniature. Now, I know it looks like it went away. It didn't, I promise. But if you feel like you want to have a bit more of a dusty effect, once you've put that down, you're going to come back to your powder and you're just going to drop some more on. Ah. And then here's where the fun comes in. So it's going to get, it might get loud for a second. I'm very sorry. I'm going to try and do this away from uh, off camera, but I'm going to grab my hair dryer and I'm going to dry it for a second. That's not going to blow everything right off. Nope. I'm sorry, Art. Hey, Mike. So we have uh, one of our fantastic sponsors and our good friend, Art of Mike Disney, in. Okay, yeah. So, oh, come on, camera. So there you can see that's where we put the... The texture. Powder. And it'll, it'll get lighter as it dries. Yeah. It'll actually go back to the color it was in the pot, so that, like, ashy gray. All right, well, good. When that when that's dried, let's pull that back on camera and we'll see it. Awesome. Yeah, so Mike, we're doing something a little different tonight. Uh, we, we're, we've we got painting going on in a couple of different places, and we're also sharing paints with others. So Mike, uh, if you happen to be painting anything tonight, I can actually pull it up and show it on this stream. Uh, we'll just use an OBS link. Uh, Toriano, can I check in back with you? Sure. All right, let's go back and let's see what Toriano's got going on here. 
Um, hey, look at you. So he's working on, yep. Yeah, uh, go ahead and hold him closer to the camera because you're showing the whole view there. Yeah, look at that guy. Okay, very nice. I like it. All right, we're going to let you go back to your anonymity as you paint, my friend. Uh, but if anybody else has something you're working on, I can show you how I can have uh, your stuff shown here in seconds on the screen. All right, so uh, now you see the ad for... Uh, February 22nd, so not this Wednesday. This Wednesday uh, will be an LMA run by Mike and Robert, and I'll let Mike talk about that in a moment. Uh, but the following Wednesday, we have this awesome guy, Matt of Feral Board and Trading, nicest guy. Uh, he and I have chatted a couple of times. He's gonna be one of my players in the charity stream this weekend. And then immediately after the charity stream, he's gonna join us and we're gonna talk about his channel. Uh, he's got 25,000 or so Instagram followers and he creates custom items, content monsters, homebrew rules that he just shares with people. Um, he doesn't monetize it, he just shares it on his Instagram. And he's just a super cool guy. Um, all right, so if you want to post pics, you can post pics or mic. If you bring up, um, if you, here, let me put it in the chat. If you Google Video Ninja, if you go to that site, you can share a screen or you can share a camera. And then it'll give you a little link that you just send to me in Discord. And I can actually live share anything that you want to show on your screen. So like if you have pictures, you don't even have to send them to me. Just whatever screen you want to show them on, you send me a link to that screen. When I pop it in here, people will be able to see whatever you want us to see from the comfort of your own home. Um, it's called Video Ninja. That's what I, I use on Wednesdays for our uh, Greyhawk Awakening campaign so that my players can all see um, you know, anything I'm sharing without the two-second Twitch lag uh, that we have. So they see it, they see it live uh, when you guys are seeing it. Uh, so Matt with Feralborn is going to be awesome on the 22nd. Uh, now, uh, Mike, uh, can you tell us what we're going to be talking about on Wednesday? Um, we're going to be talking about laws and magic. Um, how various kingdoms either use magic, can use magic, or pass laws affecting how people can use magic, either in the kingdoms or in the cities. Nice. Um, some, it's it's something a lot of people don't think about. You know, in a large city with with multiple temples. Uh, they could easily have a cleric able to cast uh, Speak with the Dead to handle murder investigations. Right. Yeah, no, I think those sort of practical applications for magic, when you really take them, you know, to the extreme, it, it's, it creates a different sense of the reality that the player characters would be living in with those magic. So that's a, I think that's fun. And then, of course, as a DM you want to create structure and, and limitation. So this goes to the uh, to the chat we had in our Discord, our talking D&D chat, where uh, the question was being asked if I use uh, destroy water, uh, you know, can I use to destroy water and target it, let's say on the organs of a living creature uh, to dehydrate it and it's sort of like it would become an insta-kill. Um, and there are very specific spells for that, like dehydrate as a feat and can be used. So, you as a DM have to make sure that you are not only keeping some sense of continuity, which is what you're talking about, but also playable, uh, you know, uh, in, the, in the way the game is structured. So that'll be a great topic. Uh, anything else you want to share on that, Mike? You also have to consider the most one of the most dangerous spells for a kingdom isn't going to be Fireball, it's going to be Charmed Person. No, well, no, well said. I mean, um, you know, charm person. It, it, you, know, you think about it. We're kind of entering in that world today with the AI stuff out there. People can do deep fakes, uh, audio and video, and make it look like you've done or said anything. What if they actually had the ability to make you do or say virtually anything uh, with the power of magic, and then tracing the accountability back to the person who? cast the spell and engaged you in that activity versus the individual who was subjected to the activity by virtue of the spell. Is that fair, Mike? Yep. Yeah, I like that. Um, Josh had a question in the chat. Uh, can someone talk about thinning paints? 
what type of viscosity are we looking at for, for ideally while not washing, but white base coating and layering. So I know Manda's painting obviously right now. So let's also let anybody that's in the chat that wants to chime in on this. We got a lot of folks that are on our voice uh, call here. Any of the folks on the voice chat um, want to respond to that? Hello, Lee. Didn't see you in there. Sorry, I realized I was muted. I kept printing out about the stuff about the spells and you couldn't hear me and I didn't realize I was muted. Yeah, well, welcome, Lee. Good to have you in the voice chat with us. Um, yeah. I so can't watch the screen because um, of my computer setup, but I can have the voice chat open while I paint, so. Great. Well, congratulations. You're now live on the internet with Blue Box. Um, so, uh, anybody in the uh, Toriano, Fraley, Lee, uh, Roger, any of you want to respond to the question about thinning and not, not washing the white base, but coating and layering? I. Honestly, I, I use. If I could, I would. If I had that experience, I would. <laughs> Same. I um, I use acrylics, and I mean, I'm not even painting a mini right now, but uh, I usually use acrylic, and uh, don't thin them. So, although it might be a good idea to thin them. I don't have that kind of experience to give somebody advice on something like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no problem. So uh, Mike Disney asked, "Is anyone allowed in the Discord chat?" The answer is yes, except for Pat Draws. Um, Pat Draws is the only one not allowed in the Discord chat, even though I just saw his name briefly pop in and out. Um, I'm just teasing, of course, but this is a no troll zone tonight. Uh, but yeah, anyone's, you just go into our Discord, you scroll down on the left side, you'll see a chat, voice chat, uh, bar that you can expand and we're in the minty mini painting and art voice chat and anybody can pop in there just be aware when you do if you speak you're going to be live on twitch not just in our discord chat yes the man who never wins hello e the last time you painted was a warhammer 40k okay um <laughs> The shade, yes, the shade. No, come on. Uh, Pat calls himself the resident blue box troll, so it's all in good fun. Um, so while we're, uh, I, I, hopefully Mike's going to pop in, and I'd love to hear his comments on that. But Manda, would you like to respond to that? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, here we go. So this is paint straight out of the pot. Okay. That's what it looks like. Okay. It's very thick. That is going to clog up your detail. So we're going to add a drop of water from our brush. Just one drop of water. And look at that already. Just one drop. Yeah. How much thinner it is. Probably actually a bit too thin, so all I have to do is pull a bit of more paint into it. Really, it depends on, on what you're trying to accomplish as you thin your paints to nice. go to what um, amount you want to thin them down. Okay. So Josh watching that said he doesn't think he's thinning enough. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not either. Uh, yeah, so we, we have agreement here uh, that we may not be thinning enough on this end as well. We're joined tonight by uh, Art of Mike Disney. Mike, thanks for popping in with us. Hey, how you doing? Doing well, thank you, my friend. And like I said, if you want to uh, share any uh, pictures, you can pop them to me in the Discord, or if you want, you can just give me that link, like I said, and I can share a screen anytime you want to. Uh, it doesn't have to be shared the whole time. I can open it and close it anytime we would uh, want. I have a question. Okay. Anybody use Citadel paints and hate them because they they get glumpy? Yep. Okay. Just wondering if anybody else is get glumpy like mine. Uh, when that happens, add either a bit of water or um, thinner. I, I think thinner or paint. to help, I'm sorry, yeah, I think to help, Manda, if you can see here, all of our Citadel paints, for the most part, are these, these pot style, and I think this is what's causing most of our challenge. Yeah. I've, I've got the same thing. I just changed them over to dropper balls. Oh, okay. So this, so all I've done, so like... This is what they come in, and then I have a, a kit, and you can get they've got a little like beads that go in it. And I just take the label and wrap it around the bottle, and that's it. I just move oh. them around from thing because these are terrible. Okay, I'm glad that other people have problems because I'm like, gosh, these are the worst paints. Because they do make good paints. They are just it's the container is the problem, right? Mike, what do you sure. Mike, what do you use? 
What's that? What do I use for pa your paints? Like, what are your preferred paints? What are my preferred paints? Are Reaper, Scale seventy five, and uh, Pro Acryl. Oh, okay. Uh, do I have some Pro Acryl <laughs> over there? Here, I've got it right here. I can show it on camera. It's what uh, I'm currently using. Uh, oh no, I don't have any of those. Or wait, maybe I do. Oh, I don't know. Oh yes, I do have some of those. Hang on, let me let me see if I can find them. Uh, I don't have any of my research. Thank here. you for Amanda. Uh, so, uh, probably uh, the consistency of skim milk is what Pat draws said for um, the thinning. But the question was uh, more than that. So, what type of viscosity are we looking for ideally while not washing out, but while basing and coating and layering? Uh, Amanda gave us a good demonstration. Mike, anything you would want to add to that? Or basing in, in thinning? Yes. Uh, it depends on honestly what what brand of paint you're using and and sometimes the different paints within the brand so uh, it, it's it's really you really can't go by the skim milk technique <clears throat> or technique I'm sorry my throat's all clogged up but uh, it, that's that's really for airbrushing. In my experience, that's that's what I've used it for, was for airbrushing, thinning it to the consistency of skim milk. But uh, thinning it, yeah, it's it's always different for me, in my experience. Uh, it's usually what brand of paint you use, it's, it's always a little bit different. So, but I usually do one drop of paint to a little drop of water. Okay. So one in one. Amanda, we just lost your camera, by the way. Oh, no. Um, all right, so usually a, a drop of paint to a drop of water, a one-to-one -one is your kind of starting reference point, Mike. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It's sometimes I might drop a, another drop of paint in there just because it might be too thin. Gotcha. Okay. Um, nice. Nice. So while we've got you in here, uh, Patrick, tell Mike what, what he's got coming his way pretty soon. A uh, nice little uh, dragon that is still in pieces, so it will not bust apart during shipping like <laughs> the last one did. Oh, uh, so it needs to be put together? Well, I... Uh, I would probably paint it and then let John put it back together when he gets it. That way it doesn't break apart either. All right. What do you think, Pat, uh, Mike? What, what? I mean, I like that idea, but then that doesn't have the cool effect of, you know, when you paint it you know, showing it on stream or whatever. So how, how, how would you like to do it? I don't want to have it break shipping it to you. So, but I've, I've had very, very good luck in shipping stuff. Um, but yeah, if, if, if I have to ship it back in pieces and let you glue it together, then I will. I'll just have to see and judge on it. Uh, when I get the model, <clears throat> Okay. Well, yeah, let's, yeah, we'll talk about that once you get the model. I, I think ideally I would trust you to, you know, package it and, and ship it. And it probably, even if you had anything breakage wise, it wouldn't be as bad as what happened with the first one that I sent you. Um, and then I, it's, it's going to be easier for you to paint it and to see it if it's a complete piece than it is, I would guess, than it is to have it separate. And plus it'd be cooler to see you paint it on stream. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, okay, I cool. I think la the last one an elephant sat on it, didn't it? Yeah, I don't know. What <laughs> yeah, I think I think they backed the 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 uh, the uh, the U-Haul over it or something. Yeah, the, the box wasn't busted though. The box was in perfect shape. That's why I was like, "How did this break?" That's interesting. You know? Huh? Yeah, yeah. The box was in the box was in great shape. I can still show you the box. You know, will, it was. I will say great shape. As um, someone who works behind the scenes shipping things, we do not, even if it's his friend, like, it, it gets moved so roughly because there's just so many boxes and you just have to keep moving them. So don't expect somebody to throw it onto a conveyor belt and get it knocked off and put it back. Like, it, pack it as much packing as you can because it might not. Like, sometimes, I guess, if, like, if you ship it first class, it might not, but, like, it probably will. I, I will say as... Even though they tell us not to throw things on boxes, you do. So, uh, I, 
it was, although, you know, the likelihood is that I was not as good at packing it as the person who sent it to me. You know, even though I had the same materials, maybe the way that I packed it in there wasn't as good. I don't know. Maybe. Um, but no, that's good that's advice, Lee. I, handling, that it, it changes, you know, who got it and who sent it. Right. Well, hey, and, and look, I mean, do you realize the value that you're getting right now here on Blue Box? You're seeing mini painting, texturing, basing. You're getting conversations about how to ship the products that you paint. Um, where else are you going to get somebody that's all behind the front lines of the shipping stuff, as well as these expert painters? What a show. Incredible. Expert here. <laughs> uh, oh, I go that far. What's that? I said, I don't know if I'd go that far. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the charity stream prep that I'm doing. Uh, before I do, Amanda, I think your focus is out again. Your autofocus keeps grabbing and, and moving us to a fuzzy place. Closer, 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 a little more, a little more. Nope, more. Oh, very close. Still not there. There it is. Well, ah, there it is. Boom. Got it. John, I'll be right back. No worries. No worries. And you, no one has to stay in or uh, feel over much. You can just pop in, pop out as you want. Uh, it's a very informal uh, thing we're doing tonight. Yeah. So uh, go ahead. No, I was just saying I'm painting is mixing colors when you is I'm trying to mix a bunch of paint colors the 10 different shades of green to try to get this cool effect and it's yeah uh, it's hard to do but you know Ugh. well the, to me the problem with with mixing colors is i can't get the same color again well and, that's true and inevitably i'm going to come back to it and i'm going to want to tweak or fix or whatever yeah. and i can i can't I think get that's it the idea behind a wet palette right is that you mix up the color and then you just you know <laughs> keep it yeah it, it looks something like that when you mix. So this is, remember I said I was mixing my, my skin color? There it is right, right there. Yeah. And you can you can see where I, I haven't mixed it fully, just the two colors that are in it. Right. But the easiest way to uh, keep mixed colors is get yourself a little piece of paper. Take said color and make sure it, it is like a uh, multimedia page. Um, and do a little swash and then write your two colors beside it. And then when you're mixing it, you hold it up against the paint color and be like, does this match? There you go. There is that. The only problem with that, it's more of a problem of, I'm, I'm going to paint it all at once, I think, instead of just, and just do how it goes. But it's that. Um, the exact ratios always get hard, especially if I'm mixing, like this one, I have white, I'm mixing blue and yellow to get green, and then I'm adding white and black and different shades and, and you know, trying to vary it because I don't want to just paint this thing green, you know, I want to paint an actual design onto it when I pick leaves, so we're just doing a gajillion different shades of green, but, um, uh, you know, I, I keep changing six different colors going. It's just a matter of having to keep swapping it up. No, that makes sense. But, All right, so we're looking now at the, uh, we're, we're going with the, the working uh, guess is this is a shambling mound and he's looking quite cool. Uh, uh, actually, what I can do, I can post a picture, a photo. It is not a shambling, it's not a mini. It's, um, it's, it's actually a, a I don't know how well the texture is being brought up um, on stream, but what I'm doing is uh, stippling, which is what something that Courtney brought up. Ooh, for the texture on the, yes. the hide. Thank you, Josh. Uh, here, I'll post it in the voice text chat, I guess. Here. Uh, that's or what I have. It's the sentimental piece because the, the bottle is... Um, it's just to you know turn it into art. I was because the first empty one. So and 
can actually, you know, do something cool with it instead of just throwing out the bottle. So I wanted to do, you know. Okay, there it is. Now I see it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. And just mixing up like six different shades of green. So before I uh, talk about the charity stream, uh, Mike Disney, talk to us about like, you know what's going on for you. Any projects that you're involved with right now? Um, anything you want to make us aware of that you've got going on? Um, well, we just put out the uh, Gordy the Gordlet hack and slash minis. It's a chibi overgourd. Yeah, you mentioned that, and I think I, I showed it earlier, but let me see if I can find a URL for it, or if you want to send me uh, something in Discord, yeah, Michael. I'll, I'll see if I can find it. Okay. That's cool. Are you playing in any uh, one-shots over the uh, Greyhawk Megastream? Uh, no, no, I'm not. Okay. Thank you for playing in Fall of Red Dawn. They had a great time with you. Aw, oh, thank you. You guys, thank you for having me. That was a great time a great great time i'm glad to hear that all right let me see if i can't find this oh we got cameron in the chat uh dahlia please say hello to everyone oh hi hello hey 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 hello. so uh you know the the uh the the children the understreet rats are all the rage of the uh internet and twitch i don't know if you're aware of this but you know it is now in greater demand than uh than Fortnite uh, or Call of Duty, people are just crying out for the Understreet Rats on Twitch. Uh, well, the feeling is the same here. I can't believe that I don't get to play uh, this weekend. I'm so sad. <laughs> yeah, the stupid Super Bowl thing. Uh, how, how dare they? Uh, how dare they? I know. So true. Uh, so, Cameron, I won't put you on the spot for too long. Do you paint much? <laughs> I used to paint when I was a when I was a young gal, um, but since leaving the comfort of my parents' home, I lost all of my paint supplies. Um, oh no! Kind of re-hesitant to take it back up because I, I think for me sometimes it can be a cost of entry thing. And I have it's a hobby that I look at and I say, "Ooh, now that's something I could get really hooked on." Uh, and I don't have enough hours in my day to get really hooked on another. <laughs> Um, that's fair. That's fair. I'm biding my time. Maybe when I have a little more free time, it might be something I pick up at a later date. But for right now, just playing in games is going to have to <laughs> have to eat yeah. up most of my schedule. I, but. I don't paint minis for that reason because I can't I can't like commit to it. But I do. I did. I can actually think of moving on. I did convince my mother to spring for some acrylics for me so I can do. I can't do minis, but I can do, you know, fun little occasional art products uh, projects so and it's all right john i put that link in the uh chat for this channel all right got it and uh but yeah that's that's about it that's going on for me just uh i got a lot of commissions like i'm doing a bunch of uh purple orcs right now and then i've got your project that i'm going to be doing at planescape dragon um, are they orcs? or are you doing them purple for another reason no, nope, purple is uh, what the customer wanted. So, uh, it's a, a if you play Warhammer uh, 40k orcs, sneaky. It makes it's the sneakiest color. Because think about it, have you ever seen a purple orc? Nope. That's why it's the sneakiest color. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, Mike, these are the ones you just yeah you just put them in a few minutes ago in the uh, mini and terrain painting channel, right? Yeah. Okay, awesome. I'm going to pull that up here, and we'll just take a look at those one at a time. So, uh, if, I've got one more I'm going to post in there, too. Okay. I just finished this one. So what are we, what are we looking at here, these two, uh, like, canisters? Those are mini holders with oh. bits of bowling ball in it. Oh, very cool. I, li I like that. And then tell us about this little guy. That is Rocky, scheming Rocky from uh, Reaper Miniatures. Just a little. I painted that for a good friend of mine named Melon, and uh, yeah, that's going to be going to Texas. He's going to be living in Texas. Very cool. Um, anything about the technique used on him that you'd want to share with us? I mean, the you got a lot of like really cool like blending of similar colors. 
<laughs> no, just uh, three layers up. Three, you know, I, I had a base coat. Then I did a wash. Then I did a, uh, the same color as the base coat, except I didn't go into recesses. And I did a highlight and then a second highlight and called it quits. That's that's on every color that you see here. That's all I did. Wow. It was three, three colors up and that was it. I called it quits. I did it, uh, I think, in two and a half hours, maybe. You did that in two and a half hours? Something like that, yeah. Show off. Uh, and then, and then of course, uh, my personal favorite, this guy. Oh my goodness, that umber. That is the. So I have an umber Hulk here. Uh, in fact, it's the very same umber Hulk uh, responsible for one of the most infamous deaths in Blue Box history, um, the the death of Millie. And uh, I painted this guy. Where is he? Uh, right here. And I'll show. So. It's it's a very similar mini, uh, but you're going to see the results of my paint and Mike's paint are not very similar. Uh, so let me pull this guy up here on camera. And boom. So this is, uh, this is my Umber Hulk, and uh, this is the very same one uh, that slew uh, Millie and uh, pinned her, broke her arm, snapped her in bits. So, you know, there's that, and then there's that. Uh, Mike, tell me what you did with those jaws. What is that connective sort of tissue between the jaws? That is Uhu glue. Did you hear me? Uh, yeah, I did. I'm just, I mean, that is one of the goriest. I've seen people try to do gore with minis before. That is gory. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, all I, all I did was uh, mix some Uhu glue with uh, red, red clear, clear red paint. Jeez, I couldn't get that out. Oh. Yeah, that's, isn't that pretty cool? Uh, for anyone who is wondering what Uhu glue is or can't find it because it's very hard to find, this, which you can get at the Dollar General or at Walmart, does the same thing. And it, it's not as brittle either. It's actually very flexible. Octite? Loctite. Loctite. Okay. And then what is that? Uh, stinky Stick seal? And steel. Stick and steel. Okay. Stick and steel. steel. So, very cool. I can, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like if I can open it. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> Mike, open it, please. No, Josh, it, it did. Uh, it brought some incredible role play. You know, we've had, you know, some of the deaths that occurred, like Josh's characters, those were tough because Liam um, and, uh, oh gosh, what was the other way? Uh, I'm forgetting his name. They died so fast, you never really got to know the characters. Phelan. But the what? other character was Yeah, Phelan, thank you. Yeah. Liam, sorry, go ahead. It's Phelan because they were, he just, they, they were, they had so much potential. They, they were, <laughs> they were, I was so excited when they, they figured out that they were, uh, uh, you know, together. It was just like when you get got more of Phelan's character and then Phelan had to die. But, you know, it was just like a whole cutesy thing, you know? Yeah. And, they got, and then ugh, both of them died. At least it, both it, of them died. Well, and and, yeah, and and, you know, Josh rushing up that first one, Josh rushing up the stairs, he takes the nat 20. Um, and then, like, I, I'll never forget it. He's like... That's right. Do it. Do it. Do it. Like Josh, I'm, I'm gonna roll the dice. You're not. And boom. Sure enough. You know. Uh, you know. Right through the heart. Uh, but anyway, the point I was gonna make is, you know, those were those were tough, but not as tough as, as the deaths of the the characters that we've gotten to know over a longer period of time. You know, Millie, uh, very much at the top of that list. And then you know, the the more recent death with Rowan was also pretty impactful. Look at that, Amanda. Looking good. Your, your camera keeps pulling itself out of uh, the tight focus, but I mean, the colors just look amazing. Those boots, um, yeah, there you go. Look at that, wow. There's the, that glue. That right. is so cool, look at that. Oh yeah, 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 okay. Thanks. And then you just hit that with some of that clear red that Mike was talking about and it gives you like a blood effect? Yep, Um, I should have some blood for the blood god somewhere here. <laughs> Close for the skull throne too. I usually mix it though. I don't paint it on there. I, I'll mix it with the glue itself and 
Oh. Yeah, I don't know why it... Oh. But if you, you you can do it both ways. So this is this will be it. Just um, paint it on. Do it real quick here. Right, yeah, so it's I, I'm gonna have here. to get. I'm gonna have to get some of that stuff because that's but there. Very, yeah. That's I need. So I, I could think of a guy right now that I, I. This probably won't show. Is this is one of my minis that I painted a few years ago, and it's one of the ones I put more effort into. I guess I would say. So, I know it's nothing on the scale of what we're talking here, but I'm kind of proud of him. And this is my orc. And I've seen this. I think Mike, you might have painted one of these guys too. And he's got all the hands on his shield, and um, I've got a pretty good level of detail on the face, but it's hard to see on that camera. And then he's got the you know the plate armor. I try to give it as much of the realism and weathered effect as I can. But that axe, I really wanted something more on that axe. Um, and I think some of that, that's that whatever you're calling that stuff, would be really cool to add to this mini. Uh, I saw a question in the chat um, that Tracy asked, and I, I haven't actually painted the the axe at all. That is just zenithal highlighting. That's just it primed. Oh wow! So yeah, that that has the axe. The only thing I've painted is the the bronze on there um, because Very nice. I was going to do a gold axe because Rizia has Halcyon. Yes, no, that it looks that looks very cool. Uh, no, yeah, Mike, I thought I had seen you do that exact same mini. This is another one I've done that I rather like. It's hard to see some of these metallics, but this is actually the one I'll probably use for um, Richard Baker's character uh, for Aiden. And uh, I painted this guy a few years ago, and I think that I could use some more of the texturing effects and highlighting on some of the shield and whatnot. You painted this one as well, Mike. Um, yeah, so what we should do is like a comparison. We could post them in the Discord. And this is what it looks like when John paints that mini, and this is what it looks like when Mike paints that mini. Um, I like painting paladins. This is another one I did. This one's metal. Those two, that one, that last one was a Reaper, um, like one of the whatever you call it, the plastics, the resins. Um, come on, focus. I like painting paladins. Shocker. Yeah, I know. Isn't that shocking? I did this guy a while back. He's he's a heavy sucker. You know, I find, you know, this is a good one. Let me ask you and uh, Mike and anybody else in the chat. Getting white cloth to look like white cloth. Um, to create, you know, some sort of movement effect with it to make it look as something other than a block of white. You know, I've tried washes or slight, you know, I just never really, like this tabard as an example, it's okay, but it, it's not giving me the look that I want. So what, what do you do with something like that? Whoops. Don't use white. <laughs> That's first off. Don't use white. Don't use no, white. No, like, no, do not use white paint. Okay. Don't, don't don't bring it up. Like you can do your highlights on white, but go for a more overall, like ivory. Okay. And brighten it up. That's what I would do. So. But um, you could also just add a layer. You know, whatever colors. You know. Right. What color never hurt anybody. Even wear blue or something. Well, that makes sense. Um, so this would be where I went with it. But okay. Start your next one, your next one, and your extreme highlights. What do you guys think of this this mini that I painted here? This is one of my paint jobs. I'm lying. This is Mike's. Mike painted this guy. Passing his work off as mine. <laughs> sorry, Mike. <laughs> I couldn't keep the ruse up for very long. People would have seen sorry, through it. Sorry, not sorry, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this gorgeous Scarn. Love that guy. Amanda, am I distracting you? Just I'm having a good time here, just showing minis and stuff. No, this is fine. I'm, I'm waiting for things to dry, so this is fine. <laughs> I think I know a guy who painted this. Anybody know who might have painted this guy? That's terrible. <laughs> no, I love this guy, I Patrick. Got street. Yeah, like, <laughs> he, that's this, horrible. Oh, this is this is when, actually it is one of my favorite miniatures. No. 
Uh, is that the same one? No, it's different. It's similar. Wait, it is no, it is the same. He's just got a different object. Yeah. Oh no, it is the same. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I, I haven't painted him yet. I'm, I'm it, it is as <laughs> as far as like the print itself goes. This is one of my favorites. It's got so oh. much detail in the print. This was a fantastic oh, no. STL. Yeah, the print is amazing. The paint job is. is <laughs> stop! Oh, no. Stop! It's a gorgeous. My camera paint just job. died. <laughs> yeah, it did. Your camera died. All right, so let's take another look at our shambling mound here. Oh yeah. Oh look at that. He's progressing nicely. Good job, Jen. I know. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> he looks cool though. Yeah, I like the variation. Yeah, in, in, in chat, Josh uh, needs to go get a resin printer now. No, no doubt. And Amanda needs to get a, a different camera set up. My yeah, my battery's dead. Oh, you don't use battery. I don't know how to do it otherwise. Uh, I'll I'll help anything. you with that. You go on Amazon for like twenty bucks. You get one of these adapters. It plugs in and it just powers your DSLR on AC. And you know like, that's like I because I'm running DSLRs all in this room and I can't be fussing with having the battery go dead in a three hour stream. So. Um, well, to be fair, I also only charged the battery for a little bit while we were talking, and then I threw it on, but... No worries. What were you saying, Lee? Oh, I was going to ask uh, for some advice, actually. Okay. Um, so I got the front part painted. That looks really cool, and I did the kind of a cool little flower design for the top, but I was wondering, should I do more green on the back, or should I... I mean, I have to wait for... Well, oh, maybe if I do it this way... <laughs> okay. But my question is... um. Should I do, or should I do like, like blue maybe? Sky reference, maybe some clouds? Uh, what do you think? Okay. Amanda's fussing with her camera. Let me go to the rest of our panel tonight. Anyone want to help it, Lee with that question? It's, uh, it's I can't the, um, see the many. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a picture on the, the stream, uh, the stream chat. Um, it's not a mini, it's a, a pump bottle because of the symbolism and, um, I wanted to do something, make it into an art piece, so I kind of just went with my gut on it, and it looks really cool, but I don't know if I should do more green or should I do blue skies for the back. Yeah, did you it's, pop it in the, uh, did you in pop the it in the Discord? Chat. Sorry. No, in the, um, in the, um, what's the chat? Uh, oh, the, okay, it's in the voice, so if you guys, if you yeah, go to the, the voice, voice chat, chat, there's a voice chat text, so not where you yeah. posted, Mike. Okay, I see it. Yeah, it's in yeah. the voice chat text. That's where she posted it. I'm going to show this yeah. other piece that Mike's got in here. Look at this yeah. guy. Very cool. Um, yeah, it, it's it's art. I don't know. Maybe it's just one green. Oh, look at that, Mike. Gosh, that is wicked. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh wow, that is that's like wow. Yeah, let me. I'm gonna I'm gonna open uh, one of these in a better full screen so you can see it more. Because uh, in Discord it only displays it partially sized. Oh. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Wow. That warg was a lot of fun to paint. Oh, it looks like it. I mean, just look at that. Yeah, that's one of my favorite ones that Mike's done. Thank you. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That's one I wish I could have it, you know, in like a, an upscale so it's, you know, a lot bigger than what it really is. And just have that displayed. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so uh, let's chat about uh, something else here real quick. Um... So, I was planning on working more on this tonight, and I just, I've gotten engrossed with chatting with all of you. Uh, but we have a charity stream this weekend. On Friday, I have um, that uh, very cool crew. This is one of the character sheets. Uh, his name is getting cut off there, but this is Aiden uh, Dembarin. This is going to be run by Richard Baker, and uh, he's running a paladin. Uh, in this one shot and so I've been working on this guy has a custom backstory I think it's pretty cool it's very brief uh, but I developed it and so each one of my players is getting one of these uh, custom character sheets yes exactly I was gonna ask that question well done Josh um, 
who recognizes that. Um, so it's actually from, it was used in Baldur's Gate. Uh, it was the original Baldur's Gate, I believe, where that one was. I'm trying to separate, it could have been Neverwinter Night, but I believe that was Baldur's Gate. Um, and uh, now, now I'm gonna go real hardcore. Here's some trivia. If anybody gets this, um, no, nah, I can't trust you guys not to Google it, can I? Go Google it. All right, don't Google it. Um, <laughs> so this guy's name, hey, Doc Shoulder, thank you so much for the sub. Uh, this guy, uh, Aiden Dambaran, uh, his father is Thursk Dambaran. Thursk, T-H-U-R-S-K. Does anyone recognize that name? Probably not. He's not Thursky. Was that the guy from Gilligan's Island? <laughs> Thurston. <laughs> no, no, no. He's he he was so there's actually it's it's in one of the old Forgotten Realms books, and he was he was like a he was a lord, Thursk Dimbarin, and um, it, that was his name, and he's in one of the old Forgotten Realms. Uh, I forget which of the kingdoms he was in, and uh, yeah. So I stole his name and made him the father of this. PC that will be paid by Richard Baker. Um, uh, so you logged into a Ravenloft RP only server a few days ago on a Netherwood. Yeah, so uh, Neverwinter Nights. Who who here in our chat? And while Amanda is fixing her camera, this gigantic black block that we're looking at. I'm sorry. That is no, it's okay, Amanda. I mean, I, I only gave you two weeks to prep for this, so it's. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm letting you back in. Now, if I let you in again, are we going to have a third view here, mess up our cameras? No, it's, okay. I'm, I'm having to switch to my phone, so. Okay. All right. Oh, wait. Yeah. Okay. So then I got to kill the other one. Hang on. Let's stop that video. There we go. All right. You're good now. There we go. Now we're getting the direct overhead view. So. Uh, I should zoom in on that more. Hang on, let me fix that for our viewers. Well, uh, uh, I'll say one thing. I expect that the focus will stay on correctly now, so that'll be nice. All right, let's get a little more That's there. Telescope that far. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it bigger. Hang on. <laughs> there we go. Almost. We can probably crop that a bit more. Yeah, it's definitely telescopic. <laughs> I'm sorry. There we go. All right. Well, it's gonna that's gonna have to do. Sorry about that, crew. But um, anyway, so where was I? Oh yeah. So the charity stream. Um, it's gonna be fun with all those different uh, players, and then I'll have their PCs all to them by probably tomorrow. I was gonna do it tonight, but I'm too engaged talking to you guys in the chat. Right, let's see here. You need help? Okay. Oh, I don't know. That's looking pretty darn cool. Let's get some more light in here for a second. So that can be seen just a bit better. And let me switch over to... All right, so you guys can take a look at this one that Jenny's working on. All right. Any... Very nice. So when you you're asking for help, what would you like to what would you like well, to see? I just don't know if it needs like. So Avonlea painted it all red. Okay. And I felt like it needed more texture. I just I'm not good about adding like different colors for textures. So I don't know. Y sure yeah. All right. So let's. Thank you, Varibi. Yes, Cormier. I knew that. Was, that's exactly right. As soon as you wrote it in the chat, the the memory came back. He was in Cormier, and um, thank you for that. So I'm glad somebody got it. So any suggestions on? I mean, this is a really nice start to this fire elemental. I think you've got some cool reds and yellows. What can we do to take this to the next level? On uh, the one that I really painted, see it. it. Oh, go ahead, Mike. I can't really see it. It's a lot of shadows on it. So you you hold it in a brighter light, John. There we go. There we go. Here, let me let me hit it with a flashlight on my phone. Maybe give you some more light as well. 
uh, the one I did similar to that print that I, that I gave you was uh, on the tips. I used like a smoky black gray kind of color just to on the tips of different like licks of fire to kind of give it a little more depth to it. That makes sense. I, you... put, I, put, I put one in the mini uh, terrain on Discord of all four elementals that I, it's a different elemental, but it's similar to that one. All right, I'll pull that up. So based on what you're, that should be enough light now. What are you thinking, Mike? What can we do to take it take it up a notch? Um, I mean, it looks really good right now uh, for, is it finished or just starting? Well, no, I mean, okay, Avonlea painted it solid color red. And so I just took a couple different yellows and golds and mixed them together and then painted the tips and then just dry brushed them to bring out the muscle. I just don't know if it needs anything extra. I don't know. I, I think it looks really good. Oh, yeah, okay. I think it looks really good too. Um, it, it, fire isn't the easiest thing to do. You yeah, know, I it's, know. It, it, it's but at the base of it, the base of the fire should be almost white. White? And yeah. Then, yeah, okay. and then go up to like a light yellow and a little, little bit less of a light yellow and then into a light orange and then, you know, work your way up into there until you hit them black tips that, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't know who was talking before. <clears throat> Uh, but, Patrick, uh, they, I think. They, they were talking about the smoky black tips. You know, that's what you, you put on the on the end of it. Oh, but okay. yeah, that looks that looks good. Okay. That's a, that's a cool print, Patrick. Look at that. Yeah, look at that face. That is wicked looking. He's yeah. pretty yeah, mean looking. I love that. Like well, I've I've painted lava before in, in fire before. Like in, in on on that piece, I would paint it kind of like lava but except for the flames you know you can't get away with painting right. flames like lava right with this guy you know he's if i wanted to dust him off after the, all these years and do a little something more to him so i can get the focus as crisp as i had it on that other guy no oh, come on you focus there we go um what else could i do to this guy Feels like did you paint the hands on the shield? Yeah, I, I think I, I did, but I, they don't look as like real as yours did. They're, so maybe something more with the hands. His green flesh, I tried to highlight it pretty well, but I'm not sure I really got got the look I looks was Looks good going. to me. Looks good to me. Like the, got the teeth all done, the inside of the mouth. Looks good. Uh, Remember what we were talking about, John? Table ready versus show ready. Yeah, and that's I'd, I'd put that on my table any day. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely not. I mean, I'm not interested. In, I mean, I am interested. Right. I'm not capable of show, <laughs> so I'm just I'm just aiming the one for thing, table. One thing that catches my eye more than anything on that mini are those red pieces on the shield, and that kind of distracts away from you know the other focal points of the model, like his face and that big ass axe that he has over his head and. You know, there's it, there's a couple things, but uh, the the red things on the shield are kind of distracting. So I would dull those. Down ah, a okay. Bit. So dull, dull the reds down on the shield so they're not pulling yeah. the focus away. Okay, I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good idea. And then, uh, and and then, what what do you got with those hands? Did you just base coat them and put a wash over them? Or? Yeah, let me let me look again, and uh, take a closer look here. So these are. Yeah, it looks like I did a base coat uh, and then threw a dark wash over them. That's all I did. Yep, I would I would go over those. If you want to take it up another level, I would go over those with what you base coated, except don't go into the recesses of the detail. You know, just stay on top. <laughs> I know it's kind of hard, but yeah. you know, stay on top. And if you want to take it to another level, add another a lighter uh, coat to that you can just add like a pinch of yellow to the base coat and that'll lighten it up and keep it kind of warm okay i like that amanda how's yours coming along 
Yeah, Jeff, she's come along. <laughs> she's cool. I'm just doing, I'm going over some of the shadows with purple. Oh, okay. Very nice. And I, I'm sorry I teased you about the camera, but you teased me, so it's okay, right? Oh, yeah. That's fine. You're not going to be mad at me after this? <laughs> I mean, I'm still mad at you, so... <laughs> You're still... I Yeah, so Amanda... Uh, so if you, uh, I mean, it's been long enough. I can't call this a spoiler. There were some key, um, deaths in the last session of the children on tears of aired. None of the children died. Um, but a couple of key NPCs, including a much beloved keeper of the pence for pages, uh, Marcus and Marcus, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, Cameron. Uh, Marcus was, you know, really cool NPC that was created. I ran him as the head of the Pens for Pages. He befriended the children, I think, way back in like session one or two. And, um, he died trying to defend them. Uh, Mila wanted him not to be there, uh, for the, uh, for the attack that they knew was coming that night from the Thieves Guild. And, of course, he had the opposite response. Once he heard the children were in danger, this older fellow went and had his took his armor out of the closet and took it to the Rashid, the local uh, armor, had some of the straps cinched and tightened and showed up to defend the children. Uh, but then, yes, that's right. Beloved the little children. And... Um, he wound up paying for it with his life, and he died a, a glorious and noble death. But Manda was so mad at me. First of all, she sent me like a snappy text that night. Um, I did. You, yeah, like, I, 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 I knew I was in trouble because normally she'll send me something after like, hey, that was a good stream. I really enjoyed that or awesome. Like, you know, Manda's a very encouraging person. After that stream that night, she sent me some like snarky thing about something I'd, I'd done wrong with like the tech or so I forget. I think it had to do with the giveaway. <laughs> and I was like, uh oh, she's mad. And then she yep. didn't she, she didn't talk to me all night long. And uh, when I fi I called her the next because I knew I was in trouble. I called her the next day. I'm like, Manda, uh, hey, how are things? I'm mad at you. Uh. <laughs> and she she said, Mike. Mike had to like call me down and sit with me last night because I was so upset. <laughs> so mad about it. I'm still mad. Yeah. Well, uh, Rachel said the tears were very real. Um, and I guess she wasn't alone. Yeah, Cameron, it was uh, brutal, but it was beautiful so as well. Advice. Okay. All right. Let's see. So we're coming back now to the black tips that Mike and Patrick. Some white on the base and then black. Okay, so let me pull that one back up. I wanted to add too, John, I I know you named the stream before we started role playing in it, but you were really apt with the whole tears part of Tears of Air. Because tears of Air. We cry all the time. <laughs> right? He just breaks our hearts with that. That's, like, oh. that's funny. Well you know, and actually that really has the title has a different meaning, uh, although oh, it not. is contextually connected, but yeah, that's funny. All right, so now we have, yeah, I see the darker tips. I like that. All right, and then, yeah, we did some more white down there. Yeah, that looks good. Should we just integrate the edge of this base? Should that be, should, should this edge of the base be painted white? No, I, I would. I, I usually paint all mine black or gray or something like that. I think he looks super cool. I did more greens. I would kill a party with that. That's why I get let him. him let, let him rephrase that. He's going to kill a party with that. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, John, at Blue Box Con, you can kill a party with this guy if you want. Ah, uh, absolutely. You can kill. You can kill a party with this guy. Oh. Yes. Oh, for size reference. Okay, so nice. there he is, and here is a just a Reaper mini. Yeah, that's yeah. monstrous. Just stand right in every there. sense. Or lay down. But yeah, you can kill somebody with him. Yes, yes, I would gladly. Here's the cool shambling mound. He looks cool. Great job on that guy. Got two new minis for my table tonight. I'm making out like a bandit. 
I'm still waiting for the uh, the big tall guy. To oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. So actually, yeah, you will you will see him. He has a he has a moment, uh, and he will have his moment in the sun or in the shade, as it may be. Let me see where I've reorganized all my stuff here. Where did I put it? He's super tall. I think I've just I put him someplace on like a display area so he's easier seeing. No, I'm not seeing him. I'll pull him up in a bit. Yeah, but that guy's. Um, he's actually got a tail spire uh, asset too. Are you serious? Yeah. I didn't know that wow. till the other day. I was looking and there's a tail spire asset for him. That's that's gonna be creepy. In one of my mod packs, he looks identical. Okay, so uh, we got a, about 20, 30 minutes left here as we're getting close to wrapping up. Um, so I'm trying to think, like, well, so I wanted to cover again this Sunday, so tomorrow, no stream. Um, we have the Super Bowl, so we'll all be, I think for the sake of all of our friends up in Pennsylvania, many of us will be cheering for the Eagles. Commercials. Uh, yeah, others of us will be cheering for the commercials. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm an AFC guy, but my Steelers are at home, so that's a bummer. Um, Nothing wrong with rooting for Kansas City. Yeah, except you know they're AFC, and I don't know. I I am just glad that uh, the Bengals are at home, Josh, and uh, they're they're sitting and watching the Super Bowl, just like my Steelers are. Uh, Cameron's cheering for Rihanna. <laughs> um, and then, uh, <laughs> sorry, Josh. And then uh, on Tuesday, there is no Greyhawk Awakening uh, because in Greyhawk Awakening, uh, we have decided that Relationship Preservation Day is more important. So we'll be celebrating Valentine's Day uh, by doing Valentine's Day things on that Tuesday night and not streaming. We will be back the following week uh, after the charity stream, and I am not looking forward to it. Um, and in fact, I'm going to show you guys why I'm not. How did I wind up on the dark music? Let me go back to the happy. Uh, well, no, no, it, it's. I, I was anticipating I, where you're going. Yeah, you know exactly where I'm going, and it's like it's. I am so frustrated by it because I love these characters. Um, I'm, why, why are we using this stream to break my heart over and over? Why? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I'll stop. Never mind. <laughs> Moving right along. Well, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna give everybody. A, I was gonna put this in Discord, but for those of you, yes, the triple split party. That's exactly right, Jeff. Um, I'm gonna launch an instance of Tailspire here for just a second, and I'm gonna show all of you something that I think will give you some context for what this party has done. Um, I was going to put this in the in the Discord, but this is probably the better way to do it. Just give me a second. While we're doing this, anybody have any other chat uh, questions, uh, comments for Manda or any of the folks that we have in our uh, first ever Discord voice chat? Thank you so much to all of you that have joined us. Um, Thanks for having us. Yeah, awesome. no, thank you, Lee. And we got... We got Mike, Toriano, Chris. Uh, Chris, uh, say hello to everybody. I didn't see you in the, in the voice chat. Hey, everybody. You know him as Brungal. Uh, Chris, do you paint much? Uh, I've been trying again. I'm pretty lousy at it. <laughs> <laughs> Join the club. Join the club. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for that. Uh, I appreciate that, Greg. Thank you. Uh, all right, I'm going to check my Discord. Apparently, I have something I'm supposed to see in my Discord. Thank you, Keith. Oh, yeah, look at that, Keith. That's really cool. Um, let me uh, let me save that and I'll share it with everyone. Put that into my LMA folder. Uh. Amanda, I saw your TARDIS shirt and I sent you a pic in, uh, your, in Discord. <laughs> I'll, I'll check it out. I think I got this one cut. Or video, I think. That's different because I think them using different techniques. I think I, I went to the green. I think it was a good decision. But I can't wait to get the next one. You know, I have one a month, so I'll, I'll be able to paint them all different ones. Nice. I the next ones die colored, you know? 
Very nice. I'll be, okay. Yeah, I'll, the next one's sky colored, but for this one, little flower motif. So there we have Keith's. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Lee. Go ahead, finish. I thought you were done. No, I, yeah, no. Go for it. Okay. What did Keith paint? Uh, so there is uh, there is Lee uh, Roger's uh, mini. That looks pretty cool. I like that. Good job on the eyes. All right. If anybody else has something you want to share or show, let me know. And I'm gonna. Some fun grass tufts for uh, elementals. Oh, yeah. Um, can you hold those closer to the phone, Manda? It's a little hard to see from yep. that distance. There you go. Yeah, very cool. Where do you get those? So these ones, um, I'm not entirely sure you can buy these ones. These were these were from Cine um, Serious Play Scenics. Okay. But it was a custom one that they did for a, a box. Um, but I have, I have lots of different varieties of grass. Um, I have some pretty flowers. I have flowers. The children love the pretty flowers. Very nice. Those are from Huge Minis. Uh, oh, I have, I have another array. <laughs> Down goes everything. <laughs> All right, hey, uh, Toriano, can we come back to your mini? Now that I messed it up, sure. <laughs> All right. So uh, for those of you that are watching, we were actually doing some remote shares from all over the world tonight. And uh, we have Toriano joining us. And we're going to just, with one click of a button, uh, we're going to take a look at how his progress is coming on his. Look at that. Very cool. You hold him closer to the uh, camera when you're between. Yeah. Oops. There you go. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Very nice. Very nice. Just checking in on your progress throughout the stream tonight. Yeah, she has a. She's been showing us base tufts all night, Josh, and it's like the, it's a never-ending stream of them. Yeah. Uh, so here's here's the ones that John needs for uh, his minis for book three. Oh yeah, exactly. All right, so I'm going to show you the rock that's been worked on here, which I believe is kind of. Okay, hang on. Let me pull this thing up real quick. And uh, then you I want to show everybody why the Greyhawk Awakening crew is basically doomed. Okay. All right. So coming back now to this guy. So here we have our textured rock. Oh, yeah. Look at that. There you go. Yeah, that looks Here's good. The... You can see where it's still wet, but once that dries... Looks very cool. Yeah, that's got a nice... That could sit right on any table. Thank Here's you. the... Um... Thank you, guys. Oh, yeah, that you, so you can see, um, as though looking at it from a satellite in space, but you can see <laughs> that it, it, it has <laughs> it, it has lightened up quite a bit. They, I would not have thought it would have gotten that light after drying. That's cool, Amanda. Yeah. windowed mode on this. Okay. And drag it up here. Okay. And choose the right. Alright. Getting there in just a second. Alright, so what I'm showing you here, this is Shade Wall, uh, which you've been seeing on stream for the last uh, several weeks and where the party's at. And I'm not going to show you everything in here, so let me hide this for a second. Um, secret. Secrets, yes, we have the secret bits. Uh, let's put, Toriano, we're going to put your paint uh, job up on the screen for a second while I cover this. All right. Uh, all right. And then, and do we have hide volumes up on this? We do. All right, so I want to get rid of that hide volume. Tab. Volume edit and reveal.
Hang on guys, I'm trying to get this hide volume to show up. I don't use these as often as John does. He's really good with them. There we go, now I got it. Okay, so um, because you're gonna know this very shortly, I think this is okay for me to show. So, here we go. Why is John so upset about Greyhawk Awakening and what happened in the last stream? So as you guys know, the party did a three-way split. So there is Valfino standing at the base of the stairs. If you watch the stream, what's that? <laughs> Don't they know better than that, my wife says. When Cade's player is urging caution, you know. Um, so this is the entryway. And of course, over here you have Rasmus and he's talking to the spirit girl over in that corner. And then you have um, right over here, you have the conversation where uh, Akira just decided to walk in there and walk right in front of the fireplace where the uh, elemental obviously has erupted. But most importantly, you have the eruption of a fireball up there on the second floor. As that fireball explodes, let me show you. And I've already made the roll. It would not have been difficult. Uh, if you come just so over, I'm gonna go through this wall. So there's actually a hallway here. And through this wall on the opposite side, we have three of the sisters of the infernal night these nuns in this chapel that was spoken of by halcyon and they all heard that explosion and now we are in a very very dark place with uh, greyhawk awakening book two so we shall see uh but i think the as a betting man odds of survival are not very good they split the party three ways. Oh, I love them. They're great players. I just don't know what they were. They, I think maybe they were tired that night. Sure. <laughs> but we're sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. And, and then, you know, I'm going to get blamed. Oh, he's a killer DM. No, I'm not a killer DM. Uh, 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 uh. I have video proof. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Amanda. <laughs> I, I, I confess. Uh, all right. So as we get ready to conclude here tonight, I want to say thank you again to all the awesome folks that have joined us tonight. And thank you for the great painting. Amanda, that guy is looking pretty cool. Yeah, I'm weathering the, um, the metal right now. Yep. Yep. Very nice. And so she'll pop some pictures of that in our Discord chat as well. Um, and then... Uh, I don't know if Amanda, what's the command for uh, the poll? Is it just uh, slash poll or how do I create? Do you, do you want me to do it? Do you, do you have a second? Yeah, I would like yeah. to put up a poll. Um, I want to. I'd like to ask the the group that's watching here tonight if they like this format or not. Um, this is the first time we've ever done. It's kind of a multimodal format. You got things going on in different places. I don't know if that's distracting to people uh, that we got a painting there and a painting there, and then we got a voice chat, and the, or if they're enjoying it. Um, so, just um, you know, po post a poll in and say, did you like the style of this stream? Um, or would you prefer just a simple kind of, you know, focus on just the painting and not all the other stuff uh, type of stream? And then we'll, you know, we'll take that into account for our next one. Also, uh, we have closed the Blue Box Con signups. Um, I had mentioned that that was going to happen. And as you know, uh, we are full. We have actually including uh, the people who have committed um, and they're confirming names and whatnot for tickets. 56 people uh, coming. We had uh, fewer than, because we had 34 signups, I think 30, 28 or 30 actually came. This is gonna be close to, close to double, close to double the size of last year's con. Um, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Oh, thank you, Cameron. I'm glad you, yeah, comfy and relaxing. That was kind of the goal. I knew this wasn't going to be a huge number stream, but just, you know, it's something to kind of hang out and chat and see work and share stuff. Yeah, I know, Chris, I, I get it though. And hopefully next year, I'm just really sorry about what happened with your house. Um, in the upper right hand corner, you can jump in that poll if you would like and let us know if this is a style. Hey, thank you very much, Jay. 
if this is a style you enjoy. You know, we know this is not gonna, uh, this is not really to drive numbers. This is not gonna necessarily bring in new people, but just a fun way to engage with our community and give you guys a chance to be heard and to share with others. Um, I think I've enjoyed this and yeah, so far it's it's overwhelming uh, that this was something people like. So, but if you have other suggestions, let us know. Um, I'll also mention something. So we had a, a, a mod or an admin discussion this morning and uh, we had me, Rory and Manda uh, Thomas kind of popped some stuff in the chat. He wasn't able to be in with us. And of course, Robert's just getting back from his trip. Um, but we talked to, thank you very much, Cameron. Thank you, Greg. Um, so the, uh, the mod discussion was very good. And we're, you know, many things that we're doing to continue to improve the community, prepare for the con, um, more LMAs that are coming, some great LMA ideas. Uh, many of you have noted that we're putting a lot more thought and effort into those. And I think it's, it's, it's proving to be valuable. Um, but one of the things I wanna start doing is occasionally polling the community anonymously. Uh, anonymous feedback is something that I've used in my work life uh, for years. As a leader, I think it's super helpful to give people a forum where they can give you feedback without worrying that you know who they are because sometimes people are unwilling to give you the critical feedback um, if they feel like it's gonna affect their you know relationship with you or how you'll view them. So we have a, a new survey app that I researched and set up for the con. So you'll be able to, when you come, if you come to Blue Box Con, you'll be able to review your your game after every one shot session you're in. Um, and you know that will be anonymous, but of course we'll know which session it was. So we'll know you're one of five people at that table, but we won't know which of the five players it is. But you can tell us that what you thought about the game. Did you enjoy the DM and the style? Um, you know, we want to know is there anything at the table that you didn't you know really jive or connect with? So we'll give you that opportunity for feedback at the con, and then also a post con kind of general uh, feedback wrap up. But uh, what we agreed to this morning, I'm going to start probably. I don't want to commit to a regular time frame. It's probably going to be like once a quarter or maybe two or three times a year. Um, I'm going to put a link in the Discord for an anonymous survey that anyone in our community can go into and fill out. I'll probably do one of these next week or maybe right after the charity convention because this is going to be a busy week. Um, but it'll give you a chance to tell us things that you like, things that you don't like, things that you'd like to see changed, or things that you'd like to see added, um, and to do so in a completely anonymous fashion. And I, I mean, I've got no reason to not make that anonymous or to lie about it. So we're going to give you, our community, the chance to give us that kind of feedback. And again, I don't promise that uh, all the feedback will be acted on in the way that you want. So for example, if you, you just give a hypothetical, you might say, uh, I hate painting streams. Well, that doesn't mean that because we get that feedback, we're gonna stop doing painting streams, right? We're going to look at the broader context of the community. Or another more specific example, I literally had people that were, that had, I think, very fair objections or concerns or lack of interest in the initial Tears of Aired setting with the players being kids. Um, and I, I think it was very well-intentioned, good feedback. But I wasn't as the DM going to say, well, because there are some people that don't really see the point of this or like it, I'm not going to do something that I believe or think is going to be a fun story to tell and a way to tell it. So the same thing will be true of any of the anonymous feedback. If it, we receive it, it doesn't automatically mean that we're going to do what we get, but it does mean that we will listen. And I promise you that we will always listen to the feedback that we receive. And yes, many times it will create uh, changes at Blue Box because I believe in listening uh, to members of the community. Uh, thank you, first time chatter, Mini Mommy. Thank you, first time chatter, uh, Moonlight Minis. We had a raid. I didn't even catch it. 17 folks joining us from Moonlight Minis. Thank you so much. Um, we're actually getting ready to wrap up here, uh, but tonight we've done a fun uh, paint along session. I'm gonna pull yours back up again. Is that all right, uh, Toriano? Uh, no, it, uh, my, my, uh, <coughs> my uh, what's called went down, so you can't pull it up now. Okay, no, no worries. I've uh, I'm going to show then a couple of the other paints that we've done here tonight. So uh, in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, all the new folks that just joined us, uh, this is Manda. You would know her as Mystical Unicorn Painting. Uh, she is a phenomenal painter. Uh, she had a much better camera view earlier, uh, but her battery went dead. 
Um, and so now she's got it on a phone that, yes, is transmitting from somewhere in the Antarctic. Um, and then we have uh, tonight, uh, this mini has been painted by Jenny here in the room. This is a, let me get this light on this fire elemental. And he's pretty wicked. This is a print from Fraley, a member of our community, Patrick Fraley. And uh, the dark tips, the white basing, the color, this was all based on some feedback that we received from members of the community. And whoops, my stupid focus popped out. Let's go, there we go, that's better. And um, we have another fire elemental that we have worked on tonight. He's still wet, you can see very, very wet and my focus is not working. Um, and then we have a piece of terrain that was done here tonight uh, that's still drying as well. And we have a shambling mound uh, uh, here that was done tonight. And so some nice additions uh, all done during the stream tonight on my table. So thanks everybody that joined us and welcome uh, to the new folks that have chatted. If you haven't followed us tonight, uh, we are actually getting dangerously close to a goal that we had for the quarter, which was to get to 2,250 followers. And uh, we're blowing well past that this quarter. Uh, let me see here. We have right now, for followers, we have 22. We're literally two followers away. I didn't even realize that. So. <laughs> If you're watching right now and you haven't followed, if we get two more followers, we will actually hit our Q1 goal um, in the you know first half of the second week of February. That's pretty darn cool. So we're certainly going to hit it uh, before the charity stream. Um, and then if you're uh, again joining late, let me talk about that charity stream. It is one of the coolest things going on in all of Twitch. It is the Megastream fundraiser event that's happening this coming weekend, uh, the 17th through the 19th. And you have uh, streamers from all over uh, the uh, community, which will be running from Friday through Sunday. Every single dollar is going to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. We have raised, are you ready for this? If you haven't heard this number already, in the last two years, we have raised over $30,000 uh, through this charity mega stream that we've done. And we're expecting to see some great things happen this, this uh, charity weekend. We're gonna be joined by some luminary players um, so I'll actually be the first stream that I have up and I'll zoom in on this. It's going to be this one right here. It's at 6 p.m. Eastern, 7 or 5 Central, right here on this channel. I'll be running a stream called uh, Crypt of Enlightenment. Uh, on that Crypt of Enlightenment stream, I have a host of really cool players, um, some, some fantastic role players, some contributors in the community, people that paint minis, uh, people that do free, um, like work for uh, one shots and game ideas and homebrew. Uh, but then also uh, we have the legendary Richard Baker. Uh, he joined us, it's this guy. He joined us for a Lore Masters Arcanum back in December. And Richard, if you don't know the name, uh, he is one of the old school TSR guys. He worked with the second edition of AD&D. Uh, every time a paladin smites evil, that was this guy's feat. Every time a barbarian rages, that was this guy's feat. Uh, every time someone plays a sorcerer class, created by Richard Baker. The entire Dark Sun setting for fourth edition. Um, so he worked on the second edition Dark Sun, but he didn't. He wasn't the original creator of it. He came on the team in progress, wrote some of the old modules and content, uh, but then he was the design lead on fourth edition. Uh, lots of fourth, uh, of Forgotten Realms work. He is gonna be our highlight gaming legend in our uh, stream of legends on that Friday night at five o'clock. You are, if you like D&D, uh, you are not gonna wanna miss that stream. So mark your calendar for that. And then uh, as we're getting ready to wrap up, we have um, many voices that are joining us tonight through our Discord. And thank you for all of you that came in. Uh, let me see who we still have on here tonight in the Discord, and I'm gonna give them a chance to say a final word. So we got Art of Mike Disney, uh, Toriano, Chris, that's Brungal, Dahlia, just playing Cameron, Fraley, Lee, uh, Amanda, and Keith. Uh, any of you have any final thoughts or comments you'd like to share before we wrap up, guys? Thank you, Jay. Very, yeah, thank you. Weekend, really excited to get to hang out with I, you all then. All right, so, let, so let's go one, two, so, so we had Cameron. Cameron, would you repeat that, and then we'll go to you, Lee? 
Uh, just saying that I'm really excited about this upcoming weekend for uh, the the big stream. I think it's going to be a great time. Thank you very much. Oh, great. Thank you, Tracy. I'm glad he enjoyed it. And yeah, if you don't know that voice, that is the voice of Dahlia. Um, and she's going to be all grown up next weekend. Uh, go ahead, Lee. I just wanted to say thanks for having us. It's a lot of fun to hang out with you guys and, and paint and chat. And uh, so thank you for having us. Yeah. Oh, oh, you bet. Thank, Thank you so much. So much. Um, let's all give a round of virtual applause to Manda, uh, Mystical Unicorn Painting, who this was her idea um, and all the organization and bugging me. <laughs> Wait, actually, I, I think if you saw it earlier, uh, my wife's standing up and like, shaking the paints i think that needs to be a gif somebody needs to do that if you can you can grab that it was it was like her hair was going everywhere it was pretty pretty funny jenny jenny you need one of these you need one of these what is that oh, vortex mixer oh boy huh thank you tracy um all right anybody else uh have any final comments before i figure out who we're gonna raid oh, oh i just Thanks. Thank you for doing this, Manda. You talked me into it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Kicking and screaming, but yes. <laughs> We're going to raid our friends across the pond over at Lawful Stupid. I haven't been able to raid them in a while. They're a good group. They actually ran a game in Dark Sun. I don't know if that's still going on. Um, but yeah, they're, they're a good group. Uh, Jade is uh, their lead over there and he and I have chatted a few times. Um, so I want to say thank you again to everyone that popped on. Thank you for sharing your screen with us, Toriano. Mike Disney, thank you for popping in and sharing your thoughts and uh, ideas and wisdom with us. Let's pop that Chibi Overgourd stuff anywhere we want to in our Discord. The last time we did it, he had sold out. Um, so hopefully they'll get him stocked in again soon. And... Let's see here. I think that's everybody. All right. So, Manda, I'm going to give you the last word. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what she what she meant to say by that was that she can't wait to see so many of you at Blue Box Con, um, and she is going to bring things uh, to the tables with which your PCs can be killed. Right, Manda. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering my husband's one of the DMs, yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, yes, go Eagles, Jay. I'll, I'll go along with that. It's not quite the Pennsylvania team that I wanted to be in the Super Bowl, but I'll take it just a few hours away from the City of Steel. All right, here we go, setting up the raid. And uh, again, no stream tomorrow. Uh, everybody enjoy your, your day off at the Super Bowl. No stream Tuesday. Take care of that special someone on Valentine's Day. Uh, we will be back with LMA on Wednesday. Mike, Necromantic DM, will be helping lead that on Wednesday. And then next weekend, it's the big charity stream. Save up all your shekels. Uh, join us. Bring the gold pieces, the platinum pieces. And uh, every single dime will go to St. Jude Children's Hospital. And uh, say hi to my friends over at Lawful Stupid when we raid them. Blue Box, thank Thank you so much, everyone, signing out.